Halloween edition. Oh, is that what that was? That's Gary. This is Allison, and we talk about jazz. Time time out. Time out. I'm not sure if this is moving from like creepy to like (laughs) old lady smoking like packs of cigarettes or like seductive. Like where on the spectrum is this falling? There's a lot. (laughs) I'm trying. I'm trying to do my. uh, I mean, I've got the the raspy voice. I was thinking I could do like the jazz uh, uh, jazz singer thing. Um, I think it's all on my list. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Failed? Oh. I, I mean, maybe if you held like a saxophone or something. I can do that. I have a saxophone right here. <laughs> sure, I can do this. Oh, so funny. I have to practice my my raspy voice voices because uh, running D and D like I have I have to have a whole new spectrum of voices if I if I can't if I don't have my actual voice. <coughs> That's true. A whole What's range your, of characters. Um, so before you showed up, we were having a discussion. Um, mm-hmm. What is your wallpaper? My wallpaper. On your computer. It's the On stuff my computer. Oh, programs. Uh, it's the, it's the default, uh, Mo- uh, yeah, Mojave Desert thing with the, the daytime changey thing where, like, sure. background changes yeah. for the time of day. So it is not, in fact, exotic? Not particularly. Okay. Mystery I mean, it, yeah, <laughs> Although I would like a, a walkthrough of all the wallpaper in your house. <laughs> Just a side note. Can we do that? Uh, we only we only have one room that has wallpaper in the house, and that's the bathroom. It's this really really wacky pink seventies like cutesy wallpaper that we kind of we simultaneously kind of hate it and also kind of like ironically like it mm. because it's just so old and bad. Yeah, and you don't hate it enough <laughs> to really go through the rigmarole of. Oh yeah, and like there, there's yeah. pink tile in that room too. So if we were going to change it, we would like want to rip everything out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a larger project. Than just it's too For much sure. pink. Yeah. Um. I obviously have a space uh, wallpaper. Obviously, the- <laughs> I'm not. I could have bet money on that. <laughs> yeah, it is currently, I have a great wallpaper story, uh, but before that, I have the flight deck of the uh, shuttle, shuttle Atlantis as it's uh, like just coming up to sunrise, so all the instruments are still lit. Mm. Um, here's my nerdy wallpaper story. I was doing a, uh, a training thing. We called them Lunch and Learnses at a previous agency I worked at, and uh, I don't, I don't know what it was on. It didn't really matter. Um, but I accidentally closed PHP Storm to reveal, like, my wallpaper at that point was a helicopter shot of when there were two space shuttles, like, on launch pads at the same time, which only happened, I think, I think just that once, maybe twice. I'm pretty sure it was once. Um, and someone made a comment like, wow, what a nerd. Damn it. And then I felt embarrassed. Like, before that, I'm like, look at my cool wallpaper. Two space shuttles. You know? Also, like, let's keep the environment, like, of all the spaces to be called a nerd. Like, yeah. let's stay real here. Yeah. Well, yeah. What would be cool is if you had if you had that wallpaper, but it was like zoomed in to the point that um, if you have dual monitors, that you could have one on each monitor, one shuttle on each monitor. Mm. Um, well, now I can because I have two monitors. <laughs> I could have different shuttles. Wow! Now you're gonna 
you've wasted my afternoon now. Now I'm going to need to figure out how I can put like a different view. Wouldn't it be neat if I could get like the two pictures from different angles? Mm. The same thing. Now you're going to like email the photographer and be like, look, I know you took this amazing photo, but here's what I need you to do. I need all the angles. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. So. So. Oh, today's topic. Today's topic <clears throat> is coruscation or coruscating, depending on what. Ah, finally, what a Star Wars topic. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, obviously has something to do with Coruscant. Yeah. Obviously, something. Coruscating. No Googling, uh, Jerry. <laughs> I'm not Googling. I have to, so I, this is so dumb. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. I usually have Slack open. I will close it in just a minute if I send a message. Somebody was complaining about a metallic wet gloss pillow embossed logo. Uh, in a car uh, control system for the, for the like audio. And I'm like, I want a t-shirt with the company logo, metallic wet gloss pillow embossed, right? Um, and I, I asked about this and uh, I've checked if there's an update on it. I don't know why talking about wallpaper got me thinking about that. Okay, now I'm closing Slack. Because uh, embossed wallpaper is worse than normal wallpaper? I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. Um, I mean, but I'm just like imagining like the logo in just a horrific, like, you know, mid nineties, Windows 95 look. And I want that shirt. Oh, we were talking about your wallpaper being ironic. And I, that's what it was. Someone said, I would wear that shirt ironically. And I'm like, I would just wear that shirt. Like it wouldn't be ironic. It would just be, this is fantastic. I think it's funny when people say that they're choosing to wear something ironically because no one else knows that. Mm-hmm. Right. It just looks like you're like wearing the thing that you say like that you're wearing ironically. Yeah, like it's good that you believe that, but none of us do. <laughs> yeah. If I wore a Katy Perry t-shirt, you wouldn't know the difference if I was wearing Katy Perry t-shirt ironically or unironically. I'd just be like, that guy likes and, Katy Perry. Right. And, and also, really, like, I wouldn't care. <laughs> like, that's the more important part. Like, you know, cool. Nice Katy Perry t-shirt. I'm like, what Katy Perry, mer what does Katy Perry merchandise even look like? I don't even know. I picture lots of like Lisa Frankish, like yeah, marshmallow, pink. <laughs> I might wear that. I'm Not sure ironically. we can find a Katy Perry T-shirt though. That's true. Well, it's like the mustache thing that was like uh, ironic mustaches. Why? What? Ironic I don't get it. mustache. It's just a mustache. How can it be ironic? It's hair you didn't shave off. <laughs> that's that's my my real pet peeve during November, is that I'm like it's all these people testing the waters that just can't do it the rest of the year <laughs> they use it as oh yeah yeah i look terrible with a mustache yeah I, I, I try no excuse to like try i just i look terrible then too i i tried it once uh during november and i was like yeah no this is never happening again this is <laughs> the like, worst thing ever yeah not only that but like uh i got my driver's license uh that month so like my oh, driver's no. license forever has me with a like eight day old mustache <laughs> I love when you see someone wearing like a mustache that's, that seems like out of place. It's so, like a baseball player with like a handlebar mustache. I mean, that was probably not out of I place. I mean, like, I will ago. wear Nowadays. a handlebar mustache if I could do a handlebar mustache. <laughs> like if, if any, if, if that was a thing that my face could do, that I would totally yeah. do it. I'm down with that. But my face does not produce a, an attractive mustache. My face produces a really horrible like 1970s porn star mustache. <laughs> it's awful. Um, <laughs> I feel like I would need like a year to go about like away from the rest of the world growing this thing and figuring out how to groom it and whatnot so that it could be consistent. I like the, my biggest. I like that you need to go away from the rest of the world during this process. They can't see well, the surely they can't see the transition period. Yeah. <laughs> transition just, period. I, I haven't seen a while. Wow. Nice mustache. You just have to emerge. <laughs> yes. Break emerge free of my cocoon. Fully formed. Freshly stashed. I tried, uh, I tried to do a, uh, um, a Hulk Hogan, you know, like yeah, mustache. Yeah. That was not, that did not save it. It just <laughs> made it worse. <laughs> I like that you're like trying various add ons. Yeah, I know. Like, and then, like, and then later I was like, well, what if I like shave it to like a Hitler mustache? No, that doesn't make oh. it any better either. <laughs> I just, picture, yeah, I picture you like gradually trying. Yeah. <laughs> None of these work. <laughs> None of this is working. 
Hmm. We have a friend who moved here from Italy and he had this like very like handlebar mustache with like curly cues at the end. Mm. And it was just always just how I knew him, how I met him. And then like he later moved back to Italy. And then when we went back, he didn't have the mustache. I was like, wow, you don't have your mustache. And he's just like, oh, I just grew that when I went to Canada to like weird people out. (laughs) (laughs) And I was just like, but it actually looked great. (laughs) Crazy Italian. It was like his Canadian persona. (laughs) I need one of those. A Canadian persona? Yeah. It's pretty much the same as the American persona. You just say A. Yeah. Yeah, with health All things with a U. With health care. Yeah. Yeah. Say A and have health care. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, sign me up for that. How do I? How do I apply? I, uh, I spell your words wrong. <laughs> I mean, I do that. Start talking about Zeds. Zeds. A, a, a to Z. Zed. Zed. Zed top. <laughs> I traveled to the states on my Canadian passport for the first time because my Ooh. American passport was being renewed, and I was super nervous about it. Like they were going to call me out. <laughs> You're not really Canadian. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Stop. I need you to spell color. See? All right. All right. We'll let you through. <laughs> but instead, so they treated me like a Canadian when I entered the States and they don't. First time in America? Yeah, they're not as they're not as nice. <laughs> they're not as nice. No, they ask you a lot more questions, not shockingly. And they were like, How much money do you have on you? And I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> What's the the slang for currency is loony, right? Well, like if, it's a, if it's a dollar. Yeah. We don't just call anything a loony. <laughs> oh, you could, so you could say, I just got a handful of loonies in my pocket. Well, you right. have loonies and you have toonies, which are the $2 coin. Yeah. And then you go into your bills. Gotcha. And we don't have any pennies anymore. Those are gone. Why would you? Yeah. So if, uh, you, well, if you pay by card, then it stays the same. But if you pay with cash, it rounds up or down. Oh. Do people like logically look at the number and decide if it's rounding down, they'll pay by cash because it saves them a couple pennies? Are there people like that? Um, I'm not sure. Like I don't know if anyone's that. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone. I'll have to pull pull Only my when you're buying circle. Of, yeah, pull my circle of five people. Well, I just I don't necessarily mean like people like us, but I would certainly imagine like. I don't know. Some of the older folks I know at my local WordPress meetup would be like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. If you're going to round up those three cents, then I'm definitely going to pay, I'll pay, pay my cash. Card. Yeah. 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 If it's going to cost me more, I'll pay by, I'll pay by card. It does that up. Less I, cash. I mean, in a year, what could it possibly add up to? Five, ten loonies? I don't know. If you're on a budget, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're out there wheeling and dealing, buying lots of stuff. <laughs> I guess that's true. Boy, you could uh, deal in. Um, this is, of course, where my mind, go, my mind goes. Like, it's basically like arbitrage. Like, you could buy stuff and then have like a cash only price, except for the exact price you bought it for, except for earning the pennies, and you could live off of that, you know? That's like when you go places and they're like, no tax. And you're like, but somebody's having to pay tax at some point. <laughs> Jude, you got to settle down today. Running out, huh? Um, what was the topic again? Coruscation. 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 Yeah. Um, Coruscation. Can you spell it? C-O-R-U-S-C-A-T-I-O-N. That's what I wrote. Ah, just as I suspected. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, from the Latin root coruscation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so we all know the planet Coruscant, and uh, it's the planet, the, the imperial hub of Star Wars. Um, and there is that, like, that, like, orbital shot, I think, no that was in, in, in the, um, in the prequel trilogy, trilogy uh, where you finally actually get to see the planet and it's like completely covered in cities like yeah. LA, except gone horribly wrong. Um, well, there's no traffic jams because there's no traffic because it's all in the air, I guess. Sure. Great. Yeah. Um, so the process, 
by which a planet uh, becomes completely covered in an urban sprawl is coruscation. So that like is the best. Los Def Angeles coruscate is coruscating Southern California. Yeah, that is the best definition I've heard for any topic, and I don't even want to attempt to redefine it. I'm <laughs> happy to leave that there. I'm actually happy to never know what it means and assume that that's the correct answer. Just it's so appropriate. It's so good. It's so well thought out and so thorough. I feel like if I had took the SATs today and that word were to pop up, that would be how I would define it. I was going to say, Chris, uh, yes. You get a medal? I won binary jazz, apparently. You won. Yes. It's yes. Done. It's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. We got nothing, it. yeah. nothing more to say. And that's it. Well, that was neat. It's a good run. <laughs> it was a good run until the ultimate definition was created. I was going to say that or... Um, uh, I mean, I was thinking of like, like. You're not uh, boring me. I'm just tired. I'm sorry. Mollusks, like, like shelled uh, shellfish, like coruscation being like the, the uh, process of like developing and hardening their shells. Oh. Isn't that calcification? No, it's coruscation. <laughs> coruscation. <laughs> it's a, it's slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. Without the calcium. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a deficiency. <laughs> I wonder if it has anything to do with paint. Why? Ah, uh, yes, the coruscation of paint. Of paint. Yeah. When you get that sort of film on the top. Boring book, but super good idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe it's like anything you get a film on top, you know? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, pudding or whatever. Or Dyson Sphere. Some oh. coruscation like that. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes if I leave... Uh, if I leave my uh, my tea on the hot plate right here for too long, uh, then the milk has a coruscation layer. Mm -hmm. What kind of milk do you use in your tea? Uh, coconut these days. Do you find that that layer is, uh, appears differently with coconut versus, I'm assuming you use other milks in the past? Almond or? Uh, no. No, it's about the same. I mean, I think that I think that uh, soy milk, just because soy milk is thicker, um, has a thicker film layer when it develops a film layer. But it it arrives at the same speed. Mm, I think it's probably easier for uh, coconut milk is fairly thin. I think, and I think thinner milks probably uh, take longer to get to that point. Science. Does it ever take longer? Mm hmm. You would think thinner would take longer? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I just drink black coffee. I don't put anything in it. So I don't really have I'm much doing, of a concept on. I've been doing oat milk lately, which is good. I had an oat milk that was good, and then and then Costco got oat milk, and we got a big thing of it, and we're like, oh, yeah, this is good. Uh, and then we had it, and it was horrible. Oh. I think, I Did think you finish that, it? We used it in like I like used it in like pancakes and like baking stuff. Like that's how we yes. ended up using it. Up. Yeah. We we did one cart and we we're like, yep, nope, no more. So we did end up using it, but but, like in, but not in for things. the intended purpose. Yeah. <clears throat> not for the drinking purpose. Yeah, it just made everything just taste not good. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're on we're on coconut. We have too many non-milk alternatives in our fridge. I think we have almond, coconut, and oat <laughs> for various needs and purposes. My partner can't do almond milk anymore. And so, yeah. Like for allergy reasons? Yeah. yeah. Certain nuts. So yeah. like peanuts, almonds. So is the almond that's in the fridge just like leftover from what, from before that or? Yeah. yeah. And I can, I can drink it. So I don't mind like putting it in my coffee and stuff or cereal or whatever. Yeah. We stopped doing almond just because um, the almond uh, production process is like bad for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, or like worse than other things, um, particularly because like almonds are so small and like, and you get the, how, when you get milk out of an almond, you get such a small amount. So you have to do a lot of this. Um, mm -hmm. So like on a scale, then it's worse than other things. Um, it, is so the byproduct of the better. waste product that can't be used for other, other things? Like the pulp? Yeah. I mean, it can I mean, be. I, like, I guess like a binder for some other foods, but I was thinking more like an industrial processes or whatever. I don't know if they do that at, at that sort of level. Like if you're making yeah. your own almond milk, you can use it for like yeah. dehydrating crackers and like weird things. But yeah, but like on a on a production level, then they would, would I don't just think toss they're, it. I don't think they're caring about the pulp. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. I know. I don't think so either. But I was thinking like more that if there was like a a an add on. If if you're making almond milk and that's eighty percent of your business and you can make you know. I don't know, or that's ninety five percent of your business and you can make five percent on selling the the buy yeah, to most someone companies, else. Most companies don't do things like that. Most companies do things like that as they get bigger. Because Some. it's like, well, where do we find where do we find more revenue? Well, here's here's easy money that we are like we don't need to add staff to do this thing. You know? There is uh when I worked at Whole Foods, there is I can't remember which one, there's a tea company um, that made like like bottled tea, but they made yeah. them in these like um, like plastic bottles but the plastic was made from the tea leaves and like they did all sorts of stuff with the, with the waste tea leaves like they produced tons and tons so that so that all of their waste wasn't actually waste because they like produced ridiculous amounts of of like waste tea leaves producing all this tea um so i for a while i had a pen that was made out of tea um hmm. i missed that pen i don't know where it went it disappeared it was my favorite pen but yeah i had a pen made that was made out of tea Somebody stirred milk into their tea with it, and they were like, "Oh no, <laughs> it's just gonna dissolve." <laughs> yeah, we watched this like documentary or, or like video thing of uh, their facilities in, in China, and it's, it's cool. So it's cool when companies thing. do stuff like that. I, I think that most companies don't, though. Like all the, all their in, in in their in their headquarters, all their vending machines were also made out of tea. Here's a fun one, uh, a company we've all heard of called Budweiser. They do beer. Um, no. Yeah. I've never heard of that uh, one. Yep. Uh, small brewery. Small, started yeah, somewhere okay. in uh, St. Louis. Probably, probably somewhere in the Midwest. Small batch. Yeah. 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 Uh, so they have a, a brewery in Jacksonville, and they had an issue with part of the brewing process is all like there's there's the waste material, right? And um, – so I don't know what they were doing with it previously. It's because Budweiser was just sitting there dumping it in the river or something like that, something terrible. I don't actually know what they were doing with it, but let's assume the worst in this case. Um, and so like, it was a big stink. This is years ago. It was a big stink though. And um, uh, it, they, what they turned out, decided to do was they spawned a new company that uh, grows sod and they used the waste material as, um, um, what's their look for? Fertilizer. So as you land in Jacksonville, you look out the window from the airplane and you can see like all these like round patches of grass that are owned by this company that's owned by Budweiser. And it was a way to avoid um, having to pay heavy fines for pollution. They're like, well, we'll just use it to grow grass and sell grass. Problem solved. Hmm. So. I'm impressed that they didn't just pay the fines. Yeah. It was think, cheaper to spawn says, the new company and turn it into a revenue stream. It so. says more about my mental state than <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I'm surprised they like did a thing that's better. <laughs> well, I don't think it has anything to do with it being better. It's that yeah. it was a way to get rid of it that uh, made them money. Yeah. And that's all. Well, I mean, it, if, but that's, that's, that's better than the alternative. So, yeah. I mean, whether it was win, with win. good intent or not, then. Exactly. And that's what, that, that, I guess that's where I was going with it is that I think a lot of companies do that and it's not for any um, reason other than delivering shareholder value. Business imperative. Wow, good on you, Budweiser. No, that's still, no, that's, still that's, that's absolutely not the point, Chris. Still don't drink your beer. Do I need to do this? Do I need to go through this again? This episode of Binary Accident, Tech accidentally, <laughs> accidentally good on you. You know, and the best part is, I, I don't know if this is true or not. I would assume that they spent, they spawned like a great marketing campaign as a result of it. You know. You mean like, silly stuff. like for Budweiser spawning a great marketing campaign? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Did you know that now? Yeah. Every every can you drink helps plant 19 blades of grass. What? Okay. Better get to drinking. I, I don't think you need to say that in Jacksonville. Better get to drinking. Hey, are you all, um, <laughs> this is a silly question. Are you all NASCAR fans? Okay. No. So this past Sunday. <laughs> was... Even I saw my own face and was just like, yeah, that's the appropriate response to that question. Um, this past Sunday was the start of their season, uh, which is the Daytona 500, which is two hours down the road from me. Not even an hour and a half down the road from me. That's the, the beginning Daytona. of the season? Yeah. Oh, why did I think it like culminated in something like that? Anyway. I don't know. It's like their biggest event, but it's the beginning of the season. Oh, I, cool. I don't know. I mean, oh, that's I great. Know. There was all sorts of interesting things that happened and always are. And it's always a, a big-ish local story because of the, our proximity to it. Um, and so it was supposed to happen on Sunday and it was raining and then Monday night the kids had scouts and I'm like, oh, I should flip it on and watch the last few laps because people are going to be talking about it. And so I watched like the last 10 laps. Uh, and let me start by saying this driver is out of the hospital and fine. But if you have not seen the crash, it's just absolutely insane. Like this car at 200 miles an hour, like turned 90 degrees into the wall and flipped upside down and then was hit midair by another car. And I'm like, Monday night, like the kids come home and I'm like, yeah. I just watched a dude die I like live on television. I'm like, you know, not like in a, so I had to sit on Twitter for hours Monday night refreshing to catch NASCAR news to see if the guy was alive because I just couldn't. I was like, anyway, I will make sure I don't catch the net the last 10 laps ever again. That's, that's the, point He's of fine. the story. Yeah. And uh, I, he was in the hospital for two days and I, I don't know. Like they just said, he's, he's released. I mean, Monday night they said his injuries were serious, non-life-threatening. And he walked out yesterday. That's impressive in itself. I, yeah, I mean, they um, make those things to, to shatter, so when they make them to withstand high impact. Yeah. He was, like, upside down, and the driver's side door was hit. By, like, it was a spot that there's probably not a lot of bracing because it's not a spot you should be hit in very often. I guess they don't drive upside down as much as they used to. Um, and then it would like slid across the ground and there's fuel spilling out and there's like a fire in it. Like it's, it was a thing. And I'm like, I mean, you just can't, I you just can't look away from that. Like, oh my gosh. So I will not watch it next year. Charlotte's not happy. No, she's no, not. No, if you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. How old is Charlotte now? She'll in my head, she's like eight Katie. already. <laughs> She'll be two next week. Okay. Katie actually turned seven today. Oh. Yeah. Any birthday celebration plans? Uh, we did some donuts for breakfast. I went to the park this morning. Uh, she requested meat and cheese for dinner. So, meat and yeah. cheese. Mm -hmm. Just like any sort yeah. of meat and any sort of cheese? She's pretty picky about cheeses. So we'll have some good cheeses. Uh -huh. we'll, have, we'll always have a mozzarella, but we'll probably have some kind of goat cheese. We'll have... Um, Something very firm and dry. I don't know. The Manchego lady. I don't know. <laughs> I really um, like this idea of like just a seven year old being like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not the appropriate cheese pairing for this meal. <laughs> it's not far from that. Only it's just pairing cheese with other cheeses and crackers. And the yeah. meats are like literally like, oh, there's pepperoni because the kids like that. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe some other cured. Meat. That's great. That's what birthdays are all about. Getting to pick what you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I mean, yep. And then we'll probably eat some I don't know, cake or something. I don't know. Cake or something. Yep. yep. So we didn't as a result of the rebooting, we didn't get a timer. Is that not interesting? You didn't huh. I have a timer. Oh. How much time do we have left? Uh well I have it says it's uh well, it's it's a timer for me, so it's uh, twenty nine fifty five currently. But oh. since the call was started before, now we're at the ten minute mark. Oh, we are! Oh, wow, yeah. that you did Wait. that perfectly timed. So then that actually it actually didn't start timing the forty minutes until I joined. Interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah. But Gary, you have to go in five yeah, minutes. I'm, well, right? let's let's fix that. I'm gonna be about five minutes late. <laughs> All right. Perfect. No, I'm good. I got 10 minutes. Nine minutes and 35 seconds or so. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so coruscation. <laughs> this is a weird one today, y'all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, to give off or reflect light in bright beams or flashes. Sparkle, to be brilliant or showy oh. in technique or style. <laughs> This and apparently it can also mean Ah, uh, yes, like a, like the coruscating stars. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which is a thing. Totally is. Totally is. It can also mean like really, um, just like scathingly critical, apparently. But that wasn't the meaning of where I stumbled across it. So. How does something wow. that means yeah, essentially I don't know. <laughs> sparkling also mean extremely critical i don't know because they were like his coruscating attack on the prime minister was the example and i was just like oh. well, that's not a thing i've heard so <laughs> sparkly attack on the prime minister i like to i will think of it that way <laughs> what a sparkly glimmery attack <laughs> so in the context of uh star wars mm. coruscant is so named because the entire planet sparkles maybe oh, okay. I like it. I like when you let the dog in and you can kind of just see the like blue the tail. The tail. <laughs> Come on. Otherwise, it would just be like Gary's opening a door for no particular reason. He's opening so the door and now he's closing a door. No, it's closing the door. Okay, let's let's put you on camera. Hello. Oh, he's out. Sweet old man. Just wants to be involved in the party. The party that is binary jazz. So as always, uh, you can submit questions to binary. Sorry. As always, you can submit questions to binary jazz. <laughs> Just go to the binary jazz website at binaryjazz.us or talk to us on Twitter at binary jazz. Today's question comes to us from Allison. <laughs> she would like us to answer the question. Does a straw have one or two holes? <laughs> well, I'm here to rock the rest of your day. We're not going to be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> one. Why? Because it's, it's all the way through. <laughs> I mean, I think it's nothing more actually than a extended hole, right? Isn't that what a straw is? Why it's like very nature? Took a hole and I extended it. Is the hole so? If you use the uh, yellow submarine uh, as an example of logic about holes, oh yes, yeah, that then, seems reasonable. Then you would then then the answer would be different because the hole itself would just be the circle part, and the opening where things go in or come out. In which case there would be two holes because there would be. Because Ringo would have a hole at the top of the straw, and he would also have a hole at the bottom of the straw. And then, What's the middle, then? Uh, infinite nothingness. It's the void. I don't know. Like the yellow submarine, when they go through it. the holes, it kind of freaks me out because it looks like they're going into like, uh, like some sort of unreality. Yeah. An, an alternate well, they dimension. Were, to be fair. Um, yeah, it's true. And I think that, well, let's take it a step further then. Does a hose have uh, two holes or one hole? I mean, if we're using that logic to determine holes, the existence of yeah. holes, then I think that in all cases of anything that's like pipe related, uh, then there's to be one hole at that one end and one hole at the other mm -hmm. end. How about when you get a, a coffee and it has a lid on it and you have the thing you pull back? Like the plastic lid is only, you know, four or five millimeter, millimeters thick. But there is a tunnel that the coffee is traversing through to your mouth. Is that one hole or two? It's a really short straw, effectively, right? That's one. At what point, That's at what one. point did it become yeah. one hole? Yeah. That's at, the well, at the one millimeter point, like, mark. What's the depth? Huh? Yeah, at the one millimeter mark. Yeah, at the one millimeter mark. <laughs> but it's more. It's like five mil. Might be more than that. It's hmm. definitely not five millimeters. <laughs> We're all gonna go out and buy coffees and like be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Five millimeters is like, you know, 
pretty actually thick. Yeah. Uh, uh, us and oh, me. I must us be thinking me. like tenths of millimeters then. This thing, yeah. So it's definitely probably not even a millimeter. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, at what point does that depth make it turn from one hole to two? Uh, at the is point like that a, you can. Is it a relationship? At, at the point that you the... can see the other side. Yeah. But you can see the other side on straw. Yeah, but through. not. I mean, sort of. I can't see the other side of the coffee cup. Like I can't look in there. There's no light. But that's not. Well, I'm just making I mean, a point. That's not it has to do with visibility. <laughs> I, I posit that it happens when the depth is greater than the diameter. Then it becomes two holes. The depth is greater than the diameter. Okay. Right. So like my, my, my wedding band, right? Obviously, it is one hole. But if my wedding band were, that'd be weird, but if it were as, as long as it is uh, wide, right, on my finger, it'd be like a knuckle gauntlet. Um, then it would have two holes. My finger. Like a to so a toilet paper tube is two holes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. But would you say it's one hole if you? I mean, that's a weird one because, like, the diameter of toilet paper tube. If you were to cut it a half an inch shorter than the diameter, it would still feel like it's two holes, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. So it's definitely not wall height to diameter ratio. Well, you were not kidding. You're going to blow our minds for the day. <laughs> I, like to like I like to like show you all something I like that we're using the, the Ringo Starr yellow submarine uh, uh, as, a, as a source of, of logic about wholeness. <laughs> our bibliography includes such classics <laughs> as... Like that, that's the source, that's the source of, of logic that, that we're going with here. Just, <laughs> and everybody's just sort of gone, gone along with that idea. Like, yeah, that sounds, yeah. Seems, seems legit. Yeah. At first I was like, I don't know where he's going with this. And I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> you'll remember that in, in Yellow Submarine, those of you who have uh, not seen Yellow Submarine, uh, there, there's a point at which they like, I've got a hole in my pocket. And he takes the hole out and he's got a hole and there it is. And he just flaps it up against the wall of the floor and then he goes through it. And it's just this really bizarre sequence of events. And uh, somehow they end up in like some undersea place with giant monsters with big feet. I don't know. Do you recommend the Beatles movies to people who aren't Beatles fans? I would recommend Yellow Submarine for anyone who likes drugs. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> also just anyone in general, probably. I, I don't know that I would recommend any of the other uh, Beatles movies to people who are not Beatles fans. Yeah. Um, they're a little bit too Beatles. -y. Yeah, particular. Yeah, but uh, but Yellow Submarine is is just because it's so nuts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Just like I wouldn't recommend any of the Who movies to anyone who wasn't a Who fan, except for maybe Tommy. What happened to uh, the idea of bands making movies? Um, people realized they were stupid. No, uh, music like videos. Is what, music videos is what happened. Is that right? I think so. Video because prior to, prior to like MTV, um, bands could make a movie or they would, could like be on like a t TV show. Um, or sometimes they made like a music video, but like nobody would see it because there's no like venue for that. So they, so like, you know, it, so no like that, that's sort of the reason, like that's sort of the marketing reason why bands made movies is because that's a way to get their, their name and their music out and whatever. And, and then MTV came along and they, now there's a place for these so the things. Star. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Remember. <clears throat> what was the last band movie you saw? Last band movie I saw. I mean, does... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.